All right, so tomorrow I'm playing the 2019 main event. This is the second time playing the main event. I played in 2016, made it to day five, and cashed for like 40K. Also, uh, this is my 10th tournament or No Limit Hold'em tournament ever. Never uh, played more than 10 tournaments in my life, which is kind of crazy. Uh, primarily a cash game player, as most of you know. I never want to miss another main event. It's something that I just want to make a priority that every year, no matter how many events I play during the series, I always want to play the main. I just think the energy, the excitement, it's just, it's really cool. It's like one of the coolest events. I really do think that um, the first time I cashed the main event was just like one of the coolest moments I've ever had in poker. Not personally, but just like the room, like the energy in the room, like everybody was like clapping, everybody was celebrating. Yeah, you know, there was like, three world-class uh, pros at my table. Like I think uh, there was a bracelet winner, uh, Brian Reese was to my left, and then to the right, there was like a postal office worker who was just so excited to catch the game. It's like really shows the, like the democratic aspect of poker, that anybody could sit down and play this game. And as long as they have that 10K entry, it doesn't matter how they get it, they can play and they could essentially change their life. I just think it's really what poker is, and it's just fascinating. So I love playing the main. Obviously, it's also a pretty weak field and, it's very exciting and very lucrative to play the main. But I wanna go over my strategy and approach preparation, so on and so forth, just break into two categories, like mental and strategy. So mental game, um, I wish I had some sort of like weird routines and things to do and things that I prep, but most of the time, I try to set myself up to perform at a high level each day. So I sleep eight hours, you know, 98% of the time. My girlfriend owns a company called Sleep is a Skill, which basically optimizes people's sleep. So obviously I sleep very well. I try to eat for performance. I like avoid sugars and, and breads and stuff because they just make me feel like shit. And I really take a performance-based approach towards like eating and uh, working out and all that. So everything I do is for performance, right? I wanna wake up, I wanna feel good, I wanna do all these things. and. I think it's really silly to think if you have like really bad habits that all of a sudden the night before you're going to just change all that. Like the work in terms of habit creation and getting yourself prepared for an event like the main is done months in advance to build those habits and conditions. Uh, part of the reason I know this is because when I played the main two years ago, I was not prepared. I was like 30 pounds overweight. I wasn't sleeping. I was like stressed with a bunch of other things. And it just sort of, I attribute a main reason to busting towards my lack of cognitive focus and attention. And this year, it's just a lot different. Um, I have a couple of weird things that I'll do uh, during the main. First, I'll fast during the main, so I won't eat any food. I'll wake up, I'll have a breakfast consisting of primarily eggs, um, eggs and vegetables, no breads, sugars of any kind. They crash during the main. And then I will also eat my second meal at around like two, three, whatever that, that first longer break is. And then I'll fast, so I won't eat at all from two o'clock on. I spend my breaks in the sauna in the Rio. I go into the hot, uh, the, yeah, the sauna essentially. I don't know, I really like the Rio sauna. Everything else is shit in the Rio, but their sauna and the attendants working at the Asana are just always like super cool. They give you this big bag of, this big box of ice essentially. And inside the ice is towels and oranges. So I'm, I'm like pretty hardcore in the sauna. I can spend a lot of time, like a really high heat uh, environment. So I sit there and then when I feel like my breaking point is, I take out the towel and I cover myself in ice and it puts me another 10 minutes. So it's just like a thing that I really love to do. Um, what else will I do? That's pretty much it. I have a couple other things. I usually bring bring with me um, Advil because I get headaches sometimes. I, I don't like to take it though, but I bring Advil. Uh, occasionally, I'll bring nicotine gum, which I use as sort of a stimulant and for a last minute kick. I don't recommend that for anyone. I'm just saying it's something that I do. Um, coffee is a big one for me. I drink a lot of coffee during the main. And then finally, peppermint oil from a company called like Sage, S-A-J-A. -A. I just like that peppermint essential oil, it feels good, it sort of like wakes me up. But besides that, I just try to maintain healthy habits for performance every single day. So the main event isn't that much different. I think that's the biggest mistake people make is that they, when they're trying to optimize performance, they jump into it like, okay, my I eat like shit, I do all these bad things for my health, but today I wanna change all that. And it's like really not going to have such profound differences. So I've been working on this for a long time, not to prep for the main, just in general. Also from a uh, mental game perspective, my goal is to really enjoy myself. Yes, I wanna play great poker. Yes, I wanna make 
the best reads and, and play at a high level. But I also want to enjoy the main event. I think in the past, uh, playing poker, I, you know, when I was younger, I loved it. And as I started to become more involved in the business side of things, I sort of lost that love and lost that passion. And I'm really excited to sort of bring it back. Now, strategy wise, my approach to the game is largely behaviorally driven. It's my biggest edge. So what's, so what is available to me, you know, it makes a difference. So like, I really believe that for the most part, running good for me is table selection. So it's not based on the fact that, you know, I'm playing with like world-class players or amateurs or whatever. It's simply based on the fact that I have players that I have a really good sense of where they're at based on behavior. And that's a good table draw for me because I can make a lot more things happen even if I don't have cards, if I have that behavioral advantage. Uh, I don't really believe in like setting chip goals. So some people will like say that like, all right, like I start with 60K in chips and my, my, the goal essentially is to like have like 180 or 200. I, I don't find that to be effective. And the reason why is I only set my goals once I have an understanding of the landscape of the table. So I'll sit down at the table and maybe like the poker gods just give me the best table ever. I'll say like, all right, I gotta, I have to set a high threshold for myself because this is an amazing opportunity to enter day, day two with a ton of chips. So it's always relative because I might sit down with crushers that I don't really, I don't want to maneuver with. It The cool thing about tournaments, it's just all about navigating, right? Like, and sometimes you have to shut down and sometimes you have to open up and sometimes you're handcuffed and sometimes you're free. Like there's all these different dynamics and I, I don't really know what the number is until I sit down at the table. So I usually do set a number, but it takes me like 30 minutes. Um, I won't go too much into the nitty gritty of my strategy, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just don't want it on because if you recognize me or something, you start to exploit me. But I do one thing cool. I think it's different. I have never heard anybody do this. So basically on uh, every dealer change, so every time the dealer changes, I take out my phone and I write down what my strategy is. So I write down like, what my strategy and what my approach is every around 30 to 40 minutes. And the reason why I do that is I'm using information to drive my decision-making process. I'm using information to sort of create a strategy and I want to be in alignment with that strategy. I have a very, I have, you know, everybody's got like their own little poker demon stuff. Like mine is the ability to go off the rails. So sometimes I just sort of like make an impulsive decision or do something that, uh, I know I shouldn't. And by writing down every 30 minutes, like a quick blurb of like, all right, this table is, you know, pretty tight. I think I can exploit blah, 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 blah. Or this table is really good. I think I should stay away from players in the one, four and five seat, just like a more macro strategy or more macro approach. I tend to be way more in alignment. So that's one of the things I tend to do. It really helps. Maybe if I have a deep run, I will kind of share the strategy and share the approach. And then, like I said before, I just really want to have fun. I'm like extremely blessed to be able to sit down and play a 10k event uh it's it's amazing it's a privilege it's a great time for poker uh and i just i just really generally want to want to enjoy it so what i'm going to be doing is posting updates here uh i find it rare to be ever busting day one based on the way that i play but it's definitely possible at the end of every day i'll post a little update and then sort of discuss like i did back in the day in like 2016 but thanks for watching and uh hopefully we'll win